Hey guys, in today's video, I want to reveal what's wrong with my serve. I did a video series that started with my one-handed backhand where I asked my fans on all the platforms, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube Shorts, to tell me what is wrong with my one-handed backhand. And this thing uh, blew up. This got thousands of comments, uh, over a million views altogether. And I made a reveal video on the one-handed backhand. Then I did a video on the forehand. And now I'm doing the same thing for my server. If you missed any of these videos, so you can check them out. I'm gonna link them in the description below. But in any case, when it comes to my serve, that is my best shot. For you guys that don't know, I used to play high-level tennis. I was a player back in the day in Germany where I played second Bundesliga. I also played Division I college tennis. And I kind of live and die by my serve. It is a shot that can hold up at the high level. How high is the level? Well, I can tell you that I was tested once against a player who was number 13 in the world, Andre Pavel. It was at a tournament in Germany, a small prize money tournament that normally a player of that caliber wouldn't enter but this tournament was held close to Halle in Germany where Andre Pavel lived and he entered this tournament just for fun I think the winner got uh, five grand if I remember correctly and he entered this tournament on a weekend just to get some match play so in any case I played this tournament which you had to qualify for which I did and I made it to the final I played really really great this was on indoor carpet and there I was playing against Andre Pavel in the final. At that point in time, he was ranked 70 in the world, so he was in the top 100. And it was the highest ranked player I ever played officially. I played against some players that were even higher, but this was just practice. But in any case, this was the highest player that I've ever played against in an official match. And guess what? My serve held up. I was a little bit tight in the beginning of the match where I lost my serve, but then I held my serve for the rest of the match and I only got broken one time. So that match right there, which by the way was uh, 25 years ago, this is when I was in my prime. I'm well past my prime now, of course, I'm 45 years old. But that match was proof to me that my serve was indeed good. And I was able to hold serve against a player of that caliber. But I'm here to tell you that the serve is one of those shots that doesn't really get that much worse with age. I'll never forget uh, reading a Goran Ivanishevic interview where he said that now that he's been retired for a long time, he's actually serving better than he did when he was on tour. And this makes a lot of sense when we're talking about the biomechanics of a tennis serve. Of course, the athleticism declines with age. There's no doubt about that. And there are some technical elements on the serve that will change as players get older. But fact is that I am still serving well. Even though my game has declined in other areas, my movement especially has gotten a lot worse. My baseline game is not as good as it was back in the day but my serve is still pretty good i can still serve quite well so i put a video out there of me serving it really didn't have much context it was just a serve down the tee on the ad side and a lot of people commented on this and if you guys remember my forehand video where i talked a lot about context where i was aiming for a very small target and i made every single forehand to the target and i talked about how you have to look at context rather than technique and so the context was a little bit missing on that video so i made another video and just to tell you guys how much effort i put into my videos during the pandemic i was coming up with ideas of how to make content at home so i i got a box at home depot and i cut a small little hole in the box and i was aiming through that hole and so i wanted to recreate this video so i went to home depot again i found the box and i was ready to pay and i'm the type of guy who doesn't bring his wallet i try to pay everything with apple pay with my phone but Home Depot doesn't accept Apple Pay. So I was like, okay, let me go to Walmart. So I went to Walmart, I found the box. I even uh, bought a dumbbell so the box uh, can stay in place when I serve into the target. Again, at the register, they don't take Apple Pay. So now I have to figure out a way how to get money out of my account with my phone, don't ask, but I was able to get money out at a bank, went back to Walmart, got the box, got the dumbbell. I wrote what's wrong with my serve on the box. And now, unfortunately, the dark clouds started closing in and it was about to start pouring, okay? So I set the box down and it already started raining a little bit. And for anybody that's been in Florida, you know there's unbelievably hard uh, and heavy showers that come down 
uh, all of a sudden. And so I knew this could happen at any moment. So I had all this pressure. I took a handful of balls and I was aiming towards the target. And in that one handful, I was able to make the ball go uh, through the target. And I got very lucky and I was able to get content out of that day. So just to show you that for a 15 second video, this whole thing probably took me uh, three hours at least. There was the context for the serve that you could see that not only do I have certain technical elements on the serve, but I'm also able to uh, get it into a very small target. And the responses were plenty. I got a lot of tips on my serve. And I want to shout out the people who got it right. They were able to figure out the correct answer on the question, what's wrong with my serve? All right, shout out to John, John Chen. He has all the fundamentals and key parts of the serve. Nothing wrong other than people's opinion on aesthetics. M Petrovich 11 writes, nothing wrong with it. Cut Killman writes, nothing. All, it's all right. Rodrigo S. Rice writes, nothing wrong with it. A6 Roth writes, good serve, thumbs up emoji. Maurice Allen writes, nothing wrong. Indian River Tennis Club writes, this was a sick. Nicola Velev writes, it's too good, question mark. So guys, those were the winners. In fact, there's absolutely nothing wrong with my serve. So I wanna thank you for watching this video. Make sure that you subscribe to Intuitive Tennis. Make sure you subscribe to Intuitive Tennis 24 seven. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok where I'll be posting more videos like this one. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Just kidding guys, I'm still here. There are things indeed wrong on my server. I'm gonna talk about them in great detail. And actually on this video, a lot of people got the correct answer. There are certain things that I don't do quite well on my serve and I'll explain it in great detail. But first of all, I wanna say that this video series was fascinating to me. Now, a lot of you guys will write, hey Nick, don't worry about the haters, don't worry about bad comments, but this is exactly what I wanted. This was my intention. I wrote underneath the videos, tell me what is wrong with my backhand, my forehand, my serve. So I got exactly what I asked for. And the fascinating thing is that these videos did so well, generated so many comments. There's an interest for tennis technique. That is great. Pickleball is taking over, guys. I made several pickleball videos. I'm gonna make more. Pickleball is endangering tennis. I know Padel is doing the same in other countries. So when I see interest in the game of tennis, whether it be tennis technique or anything else, this is a super positive sign. And I'm happy that these videos did so well. And I wanna thank everybody who left a comment, but one negative thing of tennis technique in general, especially when it's studied online, is that there are a lot of myths, a lot of misconceptions, especially on the serve and the forehand. I wanna point out some of the comments that I received that describe these misconceptions especially on the serve. Now, before I get started, I wanna give a shout out to Ben G Tennis TT, who is doing a lot of hard work in the comments section, responding to a lot of these uh, crazy comments that I received on things that I'm supposedly doing wrong, that are just not uh, factual. So thank you, Ben Tennis TT, is that your name? Ben G Tennis TT, hope I'm getting it right, uh, for all the hard work you're putting in the comments. But let's start with the first comment, which is probably the one that I received the most, and that is no leg drive. Okay, a lot of you guys were writing about my leg drive, and I wanna tell you that there is no such thing as the leg drive. I know you've heard otherwise, I'm well aware of that. But I'm here to tell you that high-level tennis players do not jump on this serve. Now, if they're telling you they're jumping, they're not being honest or they're not being introspective enough to understand that they're not jumping but there is no such thing as a leg drive there is no such thing as a jump on the serve i made several videos on that topic there's a video titled the passive leg drive you can check out there's a video titled the leg drive that you can check out these are free videos on youtube if you want to go in more detail uh, you can subscribe to intuitivetennis.com or if you want to go into the ultimate depth you can buy the intuitive serve which is my course that describes why the legs come off the ground passively in very deep detail so when you write no leg drive it's true i don't drive my legs i don't jump on my serve at all but yet 
my feet come off the ground. Well, how is that possible? Well, there are other actions in the body that are propelling the body upwards and off the ground. And one interesting thing that you will see with players who are older is that the amount of clearance they get off the ground gets smaller and smaller because their overall athleticism declines. A perfect example is Serena Williams, who in her prime was getting off the ground a lot more than she did, for example, in her last match at the US Open. If you take a look at my serve, when I was younger, I got a lot more clearance than I do on my serve now. This is just general athleticism that's declining. I don't train anymore and my body is not as explosive as it used to be. And for that reason, I am not getting off the ground that much. I have never ever in my life jumped on my serve. I've never consciously drove my legs off the ground or any of these things that are being taught out there. Uh, this is something that happens naturally and it is true for everyone that plays at the high level. If you indeed try to jump or try to drive your legs, this is something that would be absolutely impossible to time accurately. It would be something that would be impossible to do consistently at the same height. It would be very inconsistent to jump the same height, let's say through a three, four hour match, you would eventually start uh, jumping less because your legs would get tired and your surf performance would decline. But that's not what you see. You see the exact opposite is that players tend to serve better towards the end of matches. And if you take a look at the Isner Mahout match, those guys couldn't move their legs at all, but yet they were still serving aces deep into the 10th and 11th hour of that match. And guys, there's actually many more reasons why there's no such thing as a leg drive on a serve. I'm not gonna get into that now because this video would be two hours long. Like I said, you can either buy some other products to find out more about it, or you can watch some of the other uh, free videos that I have available on YouTube. Not tucking your arms to utilize conservation of momentum. See, a lot of the things that people are writing are probably things that they picked up online because I've never heard of such a thing. Tucking your arms. So what I'm thinking is that this person is confused between a flat serve, a slice serve, and a kick serve. Yes, the arm, that non-dominant arm, will tuck. at the moment of contact and shortly thereafter. But there's going to be some players who will have that non-dominant arm go backwards like this. Now, on the kick serve, the arm will always remain tucked. So in other words, you will never see somebody attempt a kick serve and then have the arms go out. Why? Because on the kick serve, there's limited torso rotation. So players will be sideways at the moment of contact. The arm will be tucked. And then shortly after contact, the body will remain in a sideways position. So the arm is going to stay on this side. It's not going to go this way. This will be a counterintuitive movement. However, when we're talking about a flat serve and a slice serve, there's rotation into the contact. So the chest will be pointing towards the target. And yes, the arm will be tucked at the moment of contact or shortly thereafter. But then once the racket starts going down, some players will have that non-dominant arm swing out this way. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this technique. But you as a recreational player, you need to be aware that there's going to be different body movements depending on what serve that you're attempting. So by no means should you ever try to consciously tuck your arm. If you try to do this on your flat serve or your slice serve, if you consciously try to hold this arm here, this will severely limit the amount of torso rotation that you're going to get. And this is going to make your serve a lot worse. This is another comment that I got a lot and that is tossing arm coming down too quickly. And again, I'm not sure where this is coming from, but it has to come from people watching videos where maybe somebody is teaching this because it makes absolutely no sense. I'm here to tell you that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the timing of my tossing arm. In fact, I have a really, really consistent toss and a toss has never been my problem all these years playing tennis. And when should the toss arm come down? Well, it's when that racket starts to drop. This should happen simultaneously. As soon as the racket starts to drop and you start unloading your serve, that's when that non-dominant side 
starts going down and that is exactly what's happening on my serve. And what I think is happening here is, again, I don't want to be repetitive, but a lot of people are studying Federer who has a slight pause in that trophy phase and other players have a slight pause too. And it's not necessarily anything wrong with this style of serve. If you're pausing here, there's a lot of players that can get away with that, but it's not the optimal way to serve. If you take the top 20 greatest servers of all time, there's only one with a pause in the trophy phase, and that is Federer. He has one of the best serves of all time, no doubt about it. But when I teach players, if they are able to serve well, and this is something that they've gotten used to, built a muscle memory, no problem at all. But I would like to have my players have a more continuous movement of the racket into the trophy phase, not a position, but rather a phase where the racket continuously goes in and out of this movement so what i think is happening when people are not analyzing this correctly which by the way all you have to do is put my serve in slow motion and scroll back and forth and you will see this a lot of things get missed even when you're watching a slow motion serve because so many things are moving at the same time and these things are hard to pick up and hard to see correctly but a lot of players have this serve imprinted in their mind as a correct server players are coming in here pausing and holding this which is not necessarily the most optimal way to serve so in this position it does look as if that toss arm is being held longer up here compared to a more continuous uh, service motion where the racket comes in and out of this movement this is where that tossing arm might not be in this position as long as if there's a pause in a trophy phase with a racket arm so another comment that i got a lot is the weight is on the front foot and this is one of the biggest misconceptions on the serve and i'm here to tell you that you have to understand the different phases on the serve to understand the role of the front foot and the back foot yes on the serve there's going to be a rocking movement where players are shifting their weight from the front foot onto the back foot no doubt about it but when we look at the serve we have to take a look at the moment where the serve is being unloaded so there's a loading phase and there's an unloading phase so the loading phase obviously is when the racket is still traveling up towards the trophy phase and once that racket is in a trophy phase and begins to drop that is the unloading phase and take a look at any player including roger federer if you pause their serve at this particular moment where the racket is about to be unloaded the entire system is about to be unloaded you will clearly see that all the weight is on the front foot when i say all the weight i don't mean 100 percent this foot is not in the air even though there has been some players that served off of one foot which is not wrong by any means but the majority of the weight i would say 80 to 90 percent of the weight is on the front foot how do we know because that back foot is barely on the ground just a tip of the back foot is on the ground you take a look at the greatest servers in the history of the game all you have to do is what i told you you pause their serve right before it starts to unload it means it hasn't unloaded yet in other words the players are loaded and they're getting ready to unload their serve the vast majority of the weight is on the front foot how do we know that because the heel is way off the ground only the tip of that back foot is touching the ground and so the serve is not being executed off the back foot like many people believe. This is not factual, guys. All it takes is for you to look at still shots of the greatest servers of all time. And you will see that all of them, yes, including Roger Federer and Andy Roddick, have more weight on their front foot than their back foot prior to unloading their serve. Now you ask yourself, now why would that be the case? Well, the answer is extremely simple, guys, because players are leaning forward. When you lean forward in this phase of your serve, when that racket is about to drop, naturally, the body weight will be more on the front foot. This is naturally what happens. So players are not aware that they're doing any of this. This is all happening naturally, guys. But what's important to understand is the following. One fundamental element of the serve is that you throw the ball inside the baseline and naturally what you should do is lean forward to accommodate this toss that's inside the baseline and now something magical will happen which i call forward momentum you'll get all your body weight into the serve yes there are some players who don't throw the ball 
as far in front as others. No doubt about that. Federer is one example of a player who has the toss a little bit closer to the baseline. That's absolutely true, but the vast majority of high-level players throw the ball away inside the baseline. Naturally, when that racket starts to come close to the unloading phase, you're going to start leaning so that when it starts to drop, you get your entire body weight into the contact. So what you're seeing on my serve is what you see on all high-level serve, and that is the vast majority of the weight is distributed towards my front foot, and for that reason, that back foot not only leaves the ground first, but you can see that when that racket is in the trophy phase, only the tip of my back foot is touching the ground, which means that the majority of the weight is on that front foot. Now here's another example of someone that's looking at the serve in slow motion, but there's so many things going on, you can't pick up things correctly so this is my advice to you is that slow motion is not enough you need some kind of app where you can scroll back and forth and you can pause the serve i know you can do this on the iphone as well but it's a little quick that scroller on the bottom on the iphone it's better to get an app and any app will do you just type in slow mo but this person writes you could make contact with the ball higher in the air or sooner when the contact is made in this example when reviewing the slowed footage it looks like contact is made a bit late after the ball is at its highest point of your toss so it's a little bit low and it seems like your arm is slightly bent on contact i think it's possible optimal power will result from contact slightly higher where your arm can extend fully so if you took a look at this video and you pause the video right at the moment of contact you will see that indeed the arm is completely extended the arm is not bent and you also have to understand that one of the biggest misconceptions out there is that you have to make contact when the toss is at its highest this is something that's almost never seen on the professional tour this is something that almost doesn't exist there may be less than a handful of players in the history of the game of tennis who could hit the toss right at the peak of the toss in other words they're going to hit the ball prior to it dropping tanner and dog are the only players that come to mind that were able to hit the ball right at the apex someone like a nick kyrgios who has a speedy service motion hits the ball on his toss drops a little bit. Goran Ivanishovic, another player with a super speedy service motion, the ball drops on his service motion as well. So this idea that the ball must be hit at the apex before it starts dropping down is one of the most ridiculous ideas that's out there. What you should do instead is what the vast majority of high level players and elite level players do on the serve, which is have a little bit higher toss and allow the ball to go, come down. There are many advantages to having a higher toss and there's a lot of rec players that try to hit the ball at the apex and they simply don't have body movements body actions that are fast enough to be able to hit a serve like that so what ends up happening is that they hit a serve that's dominated by the arm action when your toss is a little bit higher this is going to give you more time to load your serve properly and it's not only that there's also other advantages to having a higher toss such as getting a little bit more momentum from the ball dropping so hitting the toss at its apex is one of the worst misconceptions that's out there on the serve. Now I'm going to read one more and that's it because I could go on for hours reading these comments so I'm going to finish with this one. No power in the strike. You're sending a postcard to where it's going. You're not cantering into the court and my pet peeve the feet are not together. I already talked about uh, the fact that doesn't matter whether you have a platform stance or a pinpoint stance, complete style. And how in the world am I sending a postcard? Another misconception that players are able to read the serve based on certain things that the server is doing. Uh, no, you cannot. The serve at the recreational level is so unpredictable. You don't know where it's gonna go. The one serve that you could pick up in extreme scenarios where players throw the ball way off to the left it's most likely going to be a kick or if they throw the ball way off to the right if they happen to be right-handed it's most likely going to be a slice yes you can read those things but when you talk about the high level most players are able to hit all serves from 12 o'clock and this is what i do on my serve as well and how in the world you're going to be able to read that uh, it's a mystery to me And guys, now I'm gonna get into the technical things that I can improve on on my serve. There are several things that I don't do that well, that I can do a lot better. And 
To my surprise, a lot of people got this right on the search. There's a lot of correct answers. If I, I don't shout you out, maybe I didn't see your comment, my apologies, but I want to try to get everybody that got this correct. So the first person that got it right is Chorus. Nothing wrong with your serve. Maybe you could coil more and bend backwards to improve. Professor Booty said, as you said in previous videos, you can use the same stance from the ad side. That's also correct. The Sam Dingo, maybe more knee bend, arc, coil, back more, but that's not easy depending on flexibility. Tomas Rodriguez, to this rec level amateur's eye, the serve looks very fundamentally sound. Good knee bend, great racket drop, great rhythm, lots of power pace. You can guess at the pace by where the ball hits the fence. Good placement on T. Looks like it might be an ace in a match. Toss looks like it's at 12, 12.30 for a flat serve. I'm not sure if this is a trick question, but my only suggestion for improvement would be more of a reverse C loading position. Maybe more difficult to achieve due to age for even more power. Thomas Rodriguez, beautifully written. You got it absolutely right. I'll explain in a second. Vivaldi Shooter writes, Hello coach, you serve a super high level advanced serve. All fundamentals that a serve needs to have are in there. That your chest does not point so much into the sky and that your knees are not that bent so much is just style or age. I bet your flexibility 20 years ago was much higher. Man, you could still crush those aces if you would play on futures and challengers. D, there's nothing wrong with your serve. Viele Grüße aus München von einem deiner Schüler. Vivaldi Shooter, you got it absolutely right. Minor stripe rise, you don't seem to load like you usually do, nor inverted C like you call it. Adrian writes, weak knees, mom spaghetti. I like this, this is from an Eminem song is absolutely true, correct answer. Vedran Bartla writes, it looks all good, toss is good. You did a racket lag, which gives you continuous swing motion. You open body on time. Only thing in my opinion is the hip bend. You could lean forward a little more to create forward momentum, which would give you more power on the serve. It looks like you landed just a little inside the court. So again, guys, I apologize if I didn't get your correct answer, but there was many of them. And this is uh, good news to me because a lot of you guys have a good understanding of what was wrong on my serve and how I can make my serve better. So my dad always used to say is, Nick, you got to put your hip a little bit more into the court and you got to lean more. This is something that I don't always do. I could also improve my toss location at times and, and get it a little bit more into the court and really use the leaning of my body more now to adjust the balance of my entire body. It helps to bring the hip a little bit more inside. And this is something that I can definitely do better. Now, another commenter correctly said that I need to separate my feet a little bit more when I'm serving on the do side. This is something that I'm working on. I'm having a hard time because I got a lot of muscle memory. Like many players are having my feet closer together on the do side compared to the ad side. I made a video on this subject. If you're interested, you can check it out. So this is something that I'm definitely working on. And now most importantly, the biggest flaw on my serve is the fact that I serve like Karolina Pliskova. And she, in my opinion, has one of the greatest serves of all time on the WTA Tour. The greatest server of all time, in my opinion, is Serena Williams, closely followed by Karolina Pliskova and my loading position. If you take a look at my serve right before the racket begins to drop, it looks very similar to Pliskova. The only difference would be that her elbow is a little bit lower and she does have a pinpoint stance. But the way our bodies are loaded is very similar. So let me show you what that is. So basically it's a position that I call the J position where the knees are bent. And by the way, they're not much bent. I wish I could bend lower. My knees are very unstable. I have torn meniscus in both knees and I got more damage in my left knee than the right knee. There are some other ligaments that are broken in my left knee. So I can't really bend that much. It starts to hurt. And yes, I could probably benefit from a knee bend that's a little bit deeper, but I just simply can't bend that much. And I also have a difficulty of bending backwards. This is something that I'm working on. I'm trying to be able to bend backwards more, a la Djokovic, Federer, Becker, Sampras, you name it, all the greatest servers of all time the current great service that are on tour, they all have this technical trait in common is what I call the reverse C where their chest are up towards the sky. It's not something that you see frequently on the WTA tour. Players on the WTA tour that serve great, such as Serena, Osaka, Pliskova, Kvitova, Madison Keys, and yes, Sabalenka is one of the biggest serves. Even though her second serve, she has trouble with it sometimes, but her first serve is absolutely humongous. If you take a look at the loading position of all the greatest servers on WTA Tour, you're going to see the J set setup where the knees are bent, but the torso is upright like this. And this is very much what I 
do on my loading position as well. I could benefit more from having the reverse C. I would be able to thrust my torso into the contact a lot more if I did that. And this is something that I'm working on. I have to get more flexible. One picture of Djokovic that I always have in mind is that he was stretching his back like this. It was something that almost looked like a hammock and he was bending his body where his head was touching the ground and the feet was touching the ground. The body was like this. He was bending backwards. That's how flexible he is. And I'm very unflexible in the lower back area. I have had some lower back issues, some pain there throughout the year. So this is something that I'm definitely working on and something that can benefit my serve tremendously. So there it is guys, I revealed what's wrong with my serve, things that I'm gonna to continue to work on. And the beautiful thing about tennis is that no matter how good a certain stroke is, it can always get better. And now more than ever before, I need my serve because I can't move that much anymore, especially with my broken knees. So it is to my best interest to keep working on my serve and implement some of these technical things that you guys correctly pointed out.